what? And we are live in the present tense with Sam Stewart on 91.7 FM, WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR.org. Well, folks, we have reached our final episode of season five of the present tense. So many fun memories, so many fun episodes this season of the present tense. We started off with Scott McGinnis on episode 66 of the present tense. What a start to season five that was, and what a great season it was. Tonight's episode, number 97, features one of the most well-known faces in the WJ Athletics world. My guest on the show tonight is the Sports Information Director at Washington on Jefferson College. Under his tenure, WJ has won 14 Pac championships and had 17 All-American athletes, all since 2019. Everyone, welcome onto the Season 5 finale of the present tense, Eric. Thompson, Aaron, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, you do a great job on the show, I'll just say that. And, uh, well, thank you. Um, lots of good stories, and, and I learned a lot from the episodes that I've I've seen and, and heard of the student athletes. So it's it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited to have you here tonight. So, Aaron, right off the bat, for those people who might not know at home. What are the responsibilities? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis as an SID director at the college level? Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of people, even if you're an athlete, you're like, what is an SID? <laughs> Sports information director, that's that's a lot of different stuff. So I try and keep it simple. You know, the, the school has like a public relations department. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to promote the school in a positive way. So what I would say is, an SID is just kind of like that communication director for the sports, mm -hmm. you know, the athletics here at WJ. So, sports information, we have an office, I have an assistant. Um, anything on the website is a, is, a, is a big thing. So, updating all 26 sports on the website, whether that's, you know, the schedule, the results, the stats, the, the you know, the records that people break, um, your bio, you know, stuff like yeah. that. You put the headshots up. Just a lot of information, really, in terms of the website. Um, you know, weekly awards, all conference game recaps. Just pretty much anything you could think of that that promotes student athletes and then the teams on the website. And I think um, that's a big amount of the job. Um, obviously, game days. Right. So a lot of the home game days we're required to be at, and then um, not only staff the events um, with my work study crew and whatnot but also, um, you know, staff the events, public address announcing, um, you know, just communicating everything in yeah. the game. So the games get pretty busy as well. Um, sport by sport's kind of different here and there, like with what help we have, what help we don't have, you know, what the responsibilities are and whatnot, but um, game days are obviously probably like the most fun. Right, you and know. you know, with the stuff that's going on right now, basketball, wrestling, what kind of stuff are you doing at those events? So yeah, basketball last night, uh, just the lead up to the game, whether that's like the social media graphics to prepare, mm -hmm. uh, we'd still do a game program that's printed, just all that information going into the game, um, set up all the work studies, you know, that they can work the game, it's tough during finals week and whatnot. Right. So we scheduled the workers, I think we had like eight to 10 workers last night. Those workers are doing anything from broadcasting the game on the stream to updating the score on the stream, you know, running the camera for the stream, mm -hmm. and then down on the court level with the scores table, um, either myself or my assistant, Shay Stanton, will be doing the stats, mm -hmm. and we have a couple people spotting on the stats. Is that, so, that's like what uh, Alec Tomczyk does. Oh, yeah. Don't give him a shout-out this early. Oh, I'm going to give him a shout-out this early. No, well, there's going to be a lot of shout-outs tonight. It's the season finale. Okay. <laughs> if, he, if he's listening, he's Shout-out AP, Hinsdale, all the broadcasters, oh, too. Oh, those guys have done a great job, and that's been much appreciated so far in basketball. Uh, but down the floor level, we'll have stats, so like Alex and, and several others will call out, kind of like layup by number 23, made, assist. Wow. You know, really, so it's really fast paced when you put the stats. Rebound, blocks, everything. Yeah. Um, so basketball is one of those sports that's more up tempo with stats, um, especially like subs in and out. You got to know who's on the court and whatnot. Um, so that's another part of our jobs. So we'll print out stats for the coaches. They can kind of strategize what's going well, what's not going well so far in the game. I saw that you handed uh, Coach Gina a stat sheet, right? Yeah, so pretty much women's, like, at the end of each quarter, we'll print for sure, halftime, whatnot, at the end of the game. Okay. That way they can kind of go in there and tell, like, the team, like, hey, this player's kind of popping off for the other team. <laughs> we, should, 
we should probably guard her. Like, <laughs> Those like, exact hey. words. Those exact words. We're like, hey, we're getting out rebounded by ten. Like, let's pick it up a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. the stats are important in game, and then those stats get sent to the NCA for and the PAC for you know obviously stuff that goes toward all conference or you know in some cases we've had since I've been here people that uh, lead the NCA in a stat. Yeah. So like. Greg out with the sack bunts at one point. NCAA <laughs> staff champions, they'll send you a back. Oh, really? Wow. Year. Like, uh, I think softball's had a few since I've been here. Field hockey, uh, I'm not sure what else. But, like, last year in, in women's basketball, the assisted turnovers were in the top ten. Oh, really? Wow. So that's stuff, something you keep an eye on. But we're in charge of that, mm -hmm. you know, reporting that to the NCA And every other school does the same, you know, their SAD. Okay. So some schools, you mentioned what is an SAD. Some schools have started calling them like director of athletic communications. Mm. They think that's a better. Do you prefer that title? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the job changes. I think that's just kind of a more up to date term okay. that people use. Um, just because kind of the jobs changed so much too, of you know, from nineteen nineties to now and whatnot. Of it pretty much was all used to just be like stats and how that was done, um, and now like. I think it kind of changed when websites became a thing. Yeah. And then now, like 10 years ago, social media really blew it up with, you know, different avenues and ways to promote the student athletes. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely keeps you busy for sure. And, yeah. and basketball games, uh, so after the game, uh, right now, after the game, we'll try and do an interview if we win. President's post game. President's post game. So uh, we'll determine like who we want to interview. Mm -hmm. uh, is it one person? Is it two? People? How does that process work? How do you determine who you want to interview? Just kind of gets to like the second half, and we're like, hey, we're winning. Like last night, mm -hmm. who are we thinking about? Like, yeah. who are we going to grab after the game? Um, and that's kind of that. We also do a recap for the website. Mm -hmm. I think people still have a desire to like read the recaps. So yeah, for sure. So, so you, so you read, do you read all those? Is that your it kind of just depends. Last okay. night I did the men's game, even though they're away, we still do those. Right. And then my assistant did the women's recap last night. So um, it's been interesting too, because we can take like the interview and like put it in the story. So they get that as well. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but like, it's fun to interview the student athletes and get their perspective on the game and what went Yeah, it's always a good time to interview night, people. <laughs> last night we had uh, Stella. So like that yeah. was her first interview. So it's like, you're kind of going into it. Uh, wondering like how it's gonna go like you want them to be at ease uh -huh. um, and do a good job with it and I, we try and make it fun um, and it's also nice to see like if you did an interview with someone as a freshman and then the senior like mm -hmm. to see how their their confidence kind of grows I think so uh, that's kind of like the day yesterday okay well and that's just one day in the life of Barry Thompson yeah so <laughs> I think we wrapped up at like I wrapped up around 10 o'clock last Ooh. night what time did you get right in? around when that Breakfast was starting last night. Right. right what time? So, what time did you get in? What time do you usually? It kind of just depends. Like if there's going to be a game, I'm not going to be in here at like 8 a.m. You know. So every day is kind of different. Well, you said not get in. Until, so what time do you usually? No. Play? Like if, oh, okay. if there's no game, like tomorrow, I can come in at 9 a.m. Leave at five. It's kind of like a normal work okay. day for for normal workers, you know, in, in normal jobs. But our you know our line of work is kind of a little bit different. So. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends what I have going on in my day, but if if there's like going to be a basketball game at six o'clock, I might roll in at like ten o'clock, something I got like you. that. Okay. Just to kind of get a feel for the day, make sure everything's is, is ready, um, everything's up to speed. There's also people that need to check in with me or mm -hmm. or stop in my office during the day, so I want to be available for that. And I'll try it on game days. Uh, hit up the commons, you know, just get a good vibe. All right, all right, you're a comms guy. Uh, I respect that. I do too. Just to kind of get in there and, and talk to people and see how the for the people. It's for the people. And we have our, our crew up in athletics. I come down with like a lot of the intern assistants. I see that. You guys roll, you guys roll deep with that squad. We, we have a pretty big crew, you know, some days. So it's just fun to get out of the office and, and talk with them as well. So mm -hmm. No, that, that's awesome. And Aaron, my next question for you is, what is your favorite part about being a sports information director? So I've been pretty much in a college environment since... 2007 mm -hmm. you know when I went off to college so it's been it's been a lot of years here but it goes by pretty quick it's just been a fun a fun thing from the start I got into this and um, I think it's just working with the people getting to know people mm -hmm. obviously we want to win right every game every event everything we can it's good to promote it's easier to promote for us yeah. when people are winning um, it's obviously just more positive 
uh, atmosphere and everything. So um, obviously you want to promote success and be around successful people, whether that's athletically and academically. But um, I think that's that's part of it, of just getting to know the people and whether that's the coaches, the student athletes, mm -hmm. I think that kind of reinvigorates you every year. So you get to the end of the year and you're like, oh, it's been, it's been a busy, busy year mm -hmm. again. You get to the summer months. And I'll be honest, I get to about the middle of June and I'm anxious for some more WJ athletics. Hey, this so what's up. Like, you like, you get a little bit of a break, but you're ready to go pretty much right away. Yeah. Like, I, I'm always fired up to, to come in oh, that's awesome. game and, and see what's going to happen that day. I think every game day and, and every sport really like something different is going to happen that for day. Sure. It's like no one game is kind of the same as another game. So I'm just kind of curious to see what, what our student athletes are going to do that day. Yeah, and I think I've had this conversation like three or four times, interestingly enough, this week. But it, it is interesting how you get a new group in college. And we're just talking about some of my friends from last year who have come on the alumni episode. Like, and I miss those people so much, and I was so sad. And I was like, how is this ever going to be the same? But like, the cool thing about the college experience is, yeah, that's the sad part of it, but also get a new group that comes in every year. And I bet that's got to be a little bit difficult for someone like you who knows everyone so well, or at least, you know, most people so well. And, you know, it's just a new group every year. So how do you deal with that? I think it's exciting. Um, mm, it's tough way. to lose, you know, great seniors when they graduate. And I've been through that process a lot of times now. So maybe it's different, different for me. Um, you're in college, you see someone leave, it's a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, shocking to you, you know, how are we going to move on without this person in terms of like athletically helping out, you know, your baseball team, mm -hmm. but also in terms of like that personality, you know, how do we replace that and the and leadership and things like that. But I think it's exciting because you get a new group come in and you also see those younger groups rise up. Mm -hmm. So um, you kind of see how things change within that dynamic of the team. Yeah. Uh, whether it's it's positive or negative or how are they gonna overcome adversity, you don't have this player anymore who kind of steps up, mm -hmm. you know, to, t to fill those voids, whether that's leadership or production, you know, in, uh, in terms of the, on the court, uh, on the course, you know, the track, whatever. Um, so I think it's always refreshing when you get to like August. It's mm -hmm. like, these are the new names, these are the, the recruits that people are excited about, you know, in terms of making an impact. So I think you get to that new fresh year and it's just like, hey, we're ready to go. Yeah. And it also like, it, there's yeah. different phases of the year where it's like, hey, here's the fall sports. Mm, um, all right. And then uh, those seasons are winding down. You get into w the winter months and, and then you go from there with those sports and then you kind of wrap up in the spring. Right. So you go through how many sports the entire season before baseball starts. Almost all of them. <laughs> and then it's like, hey, we're, some people are like, we're trying to get to the finish line. It's been a long year. Yeah. But you're still focused on doing the best job you can yeah. to promote those sports. You want to finish strong. You know, baseball is extended by my working uh, <laughs> you know, time. Hopefully we extend a lot this year. I'm hoping we go all the way to June 30th. The very first the year I was here, I came in in January when I started. I jumped on, on the bandwagon, I guess you could say, with the baseball <laughs> team that year because we went all the way to the College World Series. Mm -hmm. And that was fun because the season gets extended. You get to be with that group and the coach is a little bit longer. You're going on some trips and whatnot. Um, and that's a different dynamic as well when you're traveling with the team or yeah. you're on a trip. Florida, with yeah, I know you stay with the coaches, right? We gotta hear some uh, funny stories from the coach's house tonight. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I know you want to hear this, and some of the guys probably, but That's it's funny. just different uh -huh. because you see people out of the office environment mm -hmm. or even off of, you know, the home game environment. You see yeah. people on the road. How are they going to handle that leading into a game the next day? How do they respond? Because you guys are playing all week down there. Yeah. And one day doesn't go well, and then the next day you're like, we have a tough opponent, and we do well, we win. Yeah. Like, how does that change from the day to day? Uh, when you're traveling like that. I think a professional level, you see that all the time. Mm -hmm. If you're in my position with, you know, a baseball team at the major league level, you might be with them for six months, day to day. Um, so we get snippets of that at this level uh, where you get to travel or whatnot. I see, I see the that. teams at that dynamic. Okay. And I think that kind of helps build those relationships what I'm talking about. You get out of the office, out of out of that kind of grind, and then you go into a more laid back kind of atmosphere at times of like, hey, the game ended. Let's let's hang out. Let's talk about the game. But 
but also like just kind of get to know people personally. Um, I think that's important as well for my role. Wow, that's awesome. And Aaron, my next question for you is, what is the most difficult part of being an SID? I think just juggling everything. Mm. Like when you have 26 forts, um, 26, wow. <laughs> you know, you're trying to promote them all the best you can. Uh, and they're all not, not created equal in terms of like their success or and whatnot. And um, every sport's different. So we talked about this a little bit before the show. Um, every sport's kind of unique in terms of what we kind of do or, or what's expected of us. And, you know, there's more home games for certain sports than others. So it's, it's challenging, but we embrace that challenge of, of doing the best we can to promote um, the best of the best that we have at WJ. Mm -hmm. So, um, and kind of like you ask what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, that's challenging when you're trying to juggle everything. You're getting ready, you're trying to do the best job you can and the most accurate job you can, you know, statistically you know on the website um, social media all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. just juggling everything and I think I've done it for a good amount of time now where I kind of know what to expect or what doesn't work what does work and uh, try and work with the coach as well like being open-minded of hey we want to try this on you know our own social media or, or your social media and see how that kind of helps with some stuff so I think it's just kind of working as a team and, and doing the best you can. Communication of like, hey, there's, in the spring, we might have baseball, softball, and lacrosse all at home on a given Saturday of like, hey, here's who's gonna be at your games. We'll do the best we can. Um, you're gonna get our best effort no matter what. If I'm at lacrosse, my assistant's at baseball, someone else fills in at softball, like just kind of communicating to the coaches of what, what the plan is for that day is probably the biggest thing. Mm. And then when those events are done, we're going back and trying to back to the office and trying to promote that of like, hey, here's what happened today. Get all that information out. A lot of the Saturdays in the fall, we're, we're it's not surprising for me to be in the office until like 9 p.m. Mm. So it's a lot of 12 hour, 13 hour yeah. days. But that's something you embrace and something you love to do. So it goes pretty quick and, and you enjoy doing it. And obviously, like I said, if teams are successful, like that kind of fuels that fire for you. Really, and you know, I love a good segue to the next question, Aaron. You did a great job right there. Because my next question is, what fuels you? I think, again, it's just, it's working with everyone that we work with. And I've been involved with sports for a long time. I've mm -hmm. loved sports. That's a passion of mine. So I think that kind of sets the, the groundwork for that fire and that, you know, mm -hmm. what fuels you to do what you do. Um, but I also take a great amount of pride in, in WJ and the people that I work with and, and doing the best job I can for my coworkers, but also the student athletes and, and waking up each day and, and trying to do the best job I can and using my assistant and my student workers and everyone I can, you know, what we have at our disposal to do the best job that we can. Mm. So I think it's just the people you work with, if it's a positive environment, we have a winning culture, I, I think, here at WNJ in a, in a lot of sports, and people are always trying to get better and improve, and uh, just to see people's passions for what they do as well, uh, that's something that's gonna fuel you from the start, I think. Yeah, and Aaron, you know, you've done a lot of different things in sports. Uh, you worked as a sports broadcaster for GreenSports.net, served as a sports writer in Green and Fayette counties. Uh, you obviously went to Waynesburg and did some radio like you talked about. So. I do want to ask you about your journey though. Um, I know you made a stop in St. Vincent, but in your own words, can you tell us after you graduated with that, you know, chapter communications department, that communications degree from Waynesburg, how'd you find yourself at WJ? Wow, so I mean, obviously <laughs> that's that's been a, quite a journey, I would say. I would say when I, obviously I, I showed up at Waynesburg, I was actually an English education major to really? start out. And I had a class that was kind of fit a requirement in sports writing. Interesting. And that's in the communication department. And the uh, the main chair down there was like a, a family friend and whatnot uh, for the communication department. So when I, I decided like, hey, I'm good at writing and reading and that stuff, but I don't know, like education and English was like right for me. I had that class and it just kind of hit, hit a spark for me of like, oh, I can move into the communication 
and I can get involved with sports and mm -hmm. and that was a big deal for me um, getting to work events and whatnot and I one of our classes was sports information management and a requirement was to work with the sports information office and athletics mm -hmm. so I lived kind of local to Waynesburg so anytime there's a break I was like a point man to like work games when they're short staffed I worked every summer as a student worker helping prepare for the next year oh, that's awesome. so I kind of got that vision of this is how it works at, at that level and whatnot. So I didn't know what an SID was when I showed up either. It was just kind of something over time that was like, hey, this is interesting. I like sports. Um, I like being around it. I like, you know, learning more, being involved with it. Um, so that was something that really set the tone for me. They got a graduate assistant position down there too. So I stuck around and did that. I got my master's in business. Um, and went through that whole process. It was it was challenging a little bit because I was a student there and then you are kind of a, a staff person. And I think some of the coaches, like they kind of see you as a student still. Mm. So I had a good experience with Bobby Fox. He's still down there um, as the SID. He's been there like 15 years now. And um, just working with him, he gave me an opportunity to be a graduate assistant that wrapped up, I wrapped up my master's. It was kind of like, okay, what are my options now? I think I got to July of that summer and this assistant SID spot at St. Vincent opened up. And obviously being in the same conference, like you kind of know the conference. So that kind of, hey, I know like I can do a good job with this. I didn't know how long I would be there or whatnot. Um, was kind of familiar with St. Vincent, knew a few people here and there interviewed for that position and got it, jumped right in, uh, and really immersed myself more into like the day-to-day, -day. Um, getting to know people, different sports, like they had lacrosse, which I had never been involved with before. Uh, so you kind of got to see some different things and build up my resume and experience. Had a great experience there. Uh, men's basketball, I think, won two PAC titles when I was there. Uh, Softball won the PAC for the first time ever. They go to the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. um, they're playing number one team in the country. Wow. Down at Virginia Wesleyan, a great ODAC school. ODAC's a great conference. And softball is kind of like baseball, one of those sports. St. Vincent's pitcher was on a run there in the PAC tournament. I think she pitched every single inning. It was like five games. Wow. Softball, you can do that. You know, right, right. you guys need to mix it up. Softball, this girl gets on a run. She goes out there, shuts out Virginia Wesley. Wow. Number one team in the country. St. Vincent had never made the NCAA tournament. They're going down there. Salisbury was also in that regional, loaded regional. They go out there and they win that first game. I would say that's in the top 10 moments of like what you've seen your student athletes do. Wow, you awesome. get to that NCAA level, when you guys know from baseball, mm -hmm. it's competitive, it's tough, it's a dog fight. Um, you're out there representing your school, your conference. You're trying to make a name for yourself. Um, as a team, as a program, build your program up. And that was just kind of a special thing to see happen, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of that. So I was at St. Vincent for three and a half, four years. Like that's a good amount of time as an assistant, yeah. but it was like the right fit for me and I enjoyed it. Um, so we get to, I think Thanksgiving of 2018 and this WJ job opens up. And again, I'm still in the pack, you know. Right, you know, it's, it's another pack school. They kind of think they're just gonna can me off to each other, you know. <laughs> one school builds me up, and then I'm on to the next one. So obviously, W and J from being in the conference, I know I had a good impression of W and J athletics was was one of the top schools in the conference. So you've been working for this opportunity. I had interviewed at some other schools and didn't get the jobs for whatever reason, not in the pack, but mm -hmm. you know, I went up to a school in Maine. Eastern PA, different schools, they were D3. I thought they were good fits. I thought I was a really good candidate. Not everything happens the way you want it to, so mm. something else can kind of happen mm. that's better for you. And I've kind of been from the Washington area growing up. You know, I've always known about W and J and the success they had at like football and, and things like that, um, you know, growing up through high school. So it was a no-brainer for me. And it just kind of happened to work out at the right time. Um, and I interviewed with Scott and he actually called me on December 7th. I know cause today's December 8th. Oh, there you go. And I always remember December 7th 
he called me and offered me the job. Oh, that's awesome. So that was four years ago yesterday. And I'm just very grateful that he gave me the opportunity and believed in me and just the opportunities he still gives me and, uh, you know, believing in me and helping me, you know, in terms of doing the best we can to promote WJ. And Scott, you interviewed him earlier right. in the semester. Just a great guy to work with. Oh, for sure. And someone that loves WJ. He's been at WJ for a long time. He was in my position before. Right. When he advanced right. up to being an AD. So he kind of knows what you go through in terms of the day-to-day, -day, the hours, working with coaches, student athletes, um, and just a guy that does a great job. There's a, there's a lot of people in our department that have been here 15, 20 years. And I think that speaks to WJ being the right fit for, for people at that level. And uh, it's just a great atmosphere to work over there in, in that building and the people we work with. So I got the job. And I guess you want to know what happened since, so I'll keep going. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So obviously, I got the job at WJ at this time of year, four years ago. And I actually worked. I wasn't supposed to start working until January second. Uh -huh. My assistant at the time, Josh Smith, he just kind of holding it down on his own for about a month. They had a doubleheader of basketball over the break, so I was like, "Hey, I'm not doing anything. It's Saturday. Let me just go kind of help out Josh." I was going to be working with him in the spring semester, just kind of get a feel for how things are at WJ and whatnot before I even start working. Um, so come work that. Start up in January. It was a good time to start up. You know, January is a little bit of a lighter period. You have basketball, swimming and diving, and wrestling. So you're kind of immediately immersed in those sports. Um, working with Coach Derubo and, and Coach Stuart Smith. Right after I was working for St. Vincent against them. <laughs> so like, I think they're a little bit like, oh, who is this guy? He came from this school and whatever, whatever. <laughs> so just getting to work with them right immediately and building up those relationships, getting to work with Josh, who was great to kind of help work with uh, that semester. Uh, and like I said, I think that year we had six conference champions, they like teams. Uh -huh. So in the fall, cross country had won. Uh, field hockey had won. Obviously, I missed those, but they won that year. And then in the spring, men's golf won, uh, men's tennis, baseball. Gosh, I can't forget any out here. Uh, oh, come on, Eric. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Uh -huh. And baseball carried that in. I was working, um, I think, until like June 10th. Baseball played more than. I think of nearly 60 games that year. Wow. So they're really keeping me active here. I just start that job, um, get through the semester, and that was a, a fun group to go through things with and get to know. And like we said, we went down to Salisbury that year for the regional. They had a great team. Uh, we won that regional, we went on to Missacordia and the Super Regionals, swept it there, go out to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So I'm just spending like three straight weeks on the <laughs> baseball team. Go to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, uh, went one and two, lost to the same team, Chapman University from California. They won the national championship. So you could say, you know, we went toe to toe with them in both games, had some mistakes that we probably wish we could have corrected and done better. Uh, but overall that first semester was great. Just kind of getting uh, immersed in everything. Then you go through a summer, kind of a chance to catch your breath, jump in with the fall sports who I hadn't worked with yet. Uh -huh. um, even though I've been at WJ for eight, nine months, you're jumping into sports there that you hadn't worked with yet. So just going through that process, and that was another fun year um, for us here at WJ, I think. And great competition, great, great job by everyone. Wrestling won that year, the team title, and it was their first one in a number of years. So that was exciting. Yeah, there was some like, we, point, there was some we points controversy about that. Oh, right? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> We versus had, your old school. Oh yeah, but we had we hosted it over here, uh -huh. and that was the first championship we had got to host in the renovated gym. Yeah, which I didn't even mention uh, the renovated gym took place that summer that I kind of just started working here. So that was exciting. You win by a narrow margin. You've been trying to win for a number of years, and it just hadn't happened. They've always had some good individuals, but for the team to win, that was a signature moment. I think since I've been at W and J, uh, and then. We go to spring break, come back, and it's like everything's shut down. Mm. 
Right. So that obviously was a challenge in terms of how do we still promote things? When are we gonna get yeah, when that. are we gonna have sports again? Right. We still had we're still trying to recruit kids to WNJ. We're still trying to put stuff on social media. So we had to be really creative in terms of March of that year, honestly, through January of the next year. Because I think it was February of 2021 when we got back rolling. You were a freshman, right? Right, February of 2021. We got back rolling with some basketball. They had shortened seasons. And then you guys in the spring sports uh, had, you had pretty much your full season. It was right. conference only, uh -huh. but the amount of games. And that semester was pretty hectic just with the sheer volume of sports we were trying to throw Right. I, I totally didn't think about that because every sport, football was played at that time, soccer was playing at that time, which soccer, men's soccer won the pack championship that year. Yeah, that was fun because that was men's soccer second straight. We had men's soccer on a Friday. Mm. And then we hosted the women's lacrosse championship on a Saturday. Yeah. So when are you ever going to get that combination back? Exactly. It was an exciting time. And so you're crazy. in the same field. Yeah. You go, you know, you win the one championship, you come back the next day and you win with the cross. Um, so that was just kind of a unique feeling of like, oh, we won back to back days, same field, sports that would never even compete in the same season. But that's just kind of the times we were in. And you did, you embraced that semester. Um, I had a, a gentleman, Andy Stanko, who was assisting me then. Right, right. I, I want to give him a shout out. I remember, yeah. He did a great job. He's at Milligan University now okay. in Tennessee, and he was a great, great asset to me. He did a great job with the behind the scenes technical kind of stuff. He did a lot of good broadcasting work. Um, just one of the hardest workers you'll meet. Um, so, like, I consider myself a hard worker, and he was working hard. So, we just kind of fed off each other that semester to get through what was a busy time. Um, and then last year kind of had a full normal year. Right. Um, and again, um, worked with a number of great people. Caitlin Edwards, who we talked yep. about. Shout out to Caitlin, as Shout always. Shout out to Caitlin. Pre former president. Just Caitlin. someone that brings great energy every day of to course. the office. Mm -hmm. And was willing to learn and, and do whatever we ask her to do. And that's all you can really ask for when you're getting a, an assistant. You know, for me, someone that's going to work hard, show up bring a positive attitude to the table, not only with me, but with the coaches, with the student athletes. And she just had a, a great ability to just kind of show up and, and, and be a great person to work with. So that was obviously great last year working with Caitlin. And we had some more pack champions last year. We talked about basketballs, winning on the same night was phenomenal. Crazy. Yeah, great night was awesome too. Oh, for Good. sure. So, and then uh, in the springtime, you guys won again. Women's lacrosse won. So it seems like some of these teams that we've had have been really rolling lately, and uh, that's been fun to watch. Get to that level and sustain that success. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, thank you for that great story. That's awesome. And, yeah, a lot of interesting things I did not know in that story. And, Aaron, my next question for you is, if you had to give advice to an SID going into their first year, what advice would you give them? I think it's just... Uh, kind of prioritizing you know what are the things we need to do I think being prepared um, it's different because you take over at different times you don't know when that job mm -hmm. like I took over in January I obviously had experience as, as an assistant but being the head person is a little bit different so I think it's just taking everything you've learned in your previous jobs whether that's just uh, whether that was in this field or whether it was a different field that's related taking those skills and being willing to work and learn mm. are the biggest things. I think that's in any job. Being able to take what you've gained in terms of your knowledge, whether that's in the academic level or a job, you move on to a different job, you show up there willing to work, um, being responsive to um, advice. I wouldn't say necessarily criticism, but advice from your peers of mm. like, hey, here's what works well at w &J. Um, Here's what we've done in the past. You can feel free to change it, but like, this is what's worked, what's not worked. Um, so I think showing up, willing to work, willing to take advice, criticism, those are the two biggest things that's gonna make you successful in any job. And also don't be afraid to reach out to your colleagues in your field or, you know, your coworkers and see, get their feedback of, of what they think would be a good way to do things or what's worked well for them in the past. Um, it's a it's a team effort, so it's not just going to be 
me running the show and I do whatever I want, put my head down. You have to kind of work with everyone here to be successful. Mm, interesting. And my next question for you, and I, I'm really interested to get into this stuff a little bit because I think you probably have such an interesting perspective on this being from the information side of uh, sports so much. What is the biggest advice you could give a freshman athlete here at WMJ? I should have been ready for this one because I know you asked Scott this in his interview. <laughs> so. Recycled question, yes, you got me there. But his answer was very interesting. I remember using it as the clip for our first show. Uh, and he talked about you know, just trying new things. So I'm interested to hear what you have to say. I guess it depends, like, you're a student and an athlete. So depending on what your major is, um, I would say embrace all those opportunities that you can have. And I think you're a good example of that. Thank you. Over here in this department of like, hey, kind of figure it out what those opportunities are. You know, you looked at, you read off some of the stuff I did. And a lot of that was like freelance, part-time gigs, just trying to get experience when I was in college, when I was out of college. Um, and I think it's just trying to immerse yourself in, in every opportunity you can whether that's within your major, within, you know, sorority fraternity on campus, whether that's a SGA, a different group like that, try and immerse yourself in, in a lot of different areas um, to be successful, you know, and kind of learn about yourself a little bit. Mm. Like, hey, I like this, I don't like that. Um, you know, if you're a communication major, maybe writing's not your thing, but this on-air thing no, is. No, actually, it's just you said that, because I, I live writing, I'm just trying to get a uh, book published right now. Okay, I'm not talking about you specifically. Oh, okay, no, I, I got you. I know when I got involved. But I know you're into writing too, so we might have to talk writing. Do you have a favorite okay. book? Are you into reading? Do you still read a lot? Not as much as I should. Maybe if you slide me some recommendations. For sure. I'll, in I'll terms tell you. of life and sports. Yeah, I was telling okay, yeah, I was, uh, I was telling you about, I was listening to the new uh, David Goggins episode on Joe Rogan. Do you know who David Goggins is? Not really. He is a former Navy SEAL who's an ultra marathon runner. His book, Can't Hurt Me, about mental toughness, is one of the best books I've ever written. Maybe I'll, I have it in my dorm room. I have to slide it to you. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I, sh I need to start reading more in my spare time, you know, <laughs> 9 o'clock at night when I get home from the game. It's very relaxing because it, it, it also when you watch TV at night, kind of the blue light keeps you up a little bit. Yeah. So you read about 10, 15 pages before you go to bed. Fall asleep a loser. I'll take that advice. This is me learning from someone else, and I'm going to use this now moving forward. To well, thank you. I better you. myself. But no, I would say embrace the opportunities, kind of finding what fits you. And I think that leads into sports a little bit. Mm-hmm. You come in as a freshman, not everyone's going to be that standout for your starter. Very it's, often it's true. not, you might, I don't want to put a percentage on it, but it might be like 5 to 10% of, of athletes have that chance. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's it's competitive. Even Division three level, people like to kind of knock it at times, but it's competitive. We have really good athletes here. It's tough to make that immediate impact. So what I would say is you come up with your freshman group, as a, as a first year student and kind of gel with that group and kind of find your role on the team is the biggest thing in terms of athletics. Maybe you are the best player from day one uh, or the most impactful uh, you know, athlete for that team, but maybe you're, you're kind of in the middle mm. and you're looking to kind of work your way up to be a starter. And I think that's what makes our, our teams successful of like, hey, we graduated some players from a championship team who's going to step up. And that's what I talked about with like being, you know, well, look excited at the, for the year. Oh, for sure. And you look at like, I mean, I, I've had J.R. Biggs on, had many conversations with them. I mean, they don't really play too much their freshman year. You know, those guys, even Gearhart, and then they step up and some of the seniors who were carrying the team, and they were the number one seed the year before they won the championship. And then those guys step up pretty much a whole new starting lineup. They bring home a packed championship. You know? Yeah, the basketball is interesting because I first got here, Coach Stuart Smith was really trying to build that up. He had taken worst team in the PAC, uh, the program at that time. And it's a process, you know, you get one freshman group in, but they're freshmen. Right. Even if they have talent, it's gonna take some time to build it up and you have your whole recruiting group. You kind of go through the process of those guys learning what you want as a culture of your team and, and whatnot. So I think the basketballs are an interesting case study. On the women's side, they've been strong for a while with Coach right. Sharubo. They finally got over that hump though last year. They had a four-year streak of losing in the finals, well, which was tough. And yeah. they had some really good players. Um, 
Alexia Cosmopolitan. Yeah, she came on actually season one of the show. Okay, <laughs> Lauren Gilbert, phenomenal player, battled injuries throughout her career, um, finished with 995 career points. Mm. And that and she was a COVID senior, mm. so she only had 10 games that last year. So she's easily getting 1,000 right. um, if you play a full season that year. Maria Lawhorn and Hannah Johnston, also, you know, they're really good players. They were, you know, Alex Cito in terms of like that production, but they were solid three, four year contributors, starters on those really good teams. And they kind of found what their role was. Um, and Hannah was a two sport athlete. She started women's soccer as well. So like to be able to juggle that, Hannah was a tremendous student um, and she's being successful in her post, you know, WJ career, I'm sure. But you have a senior class like that, and they lost four games of the championship. And they had a good competition. It wasn't, you know, some people would, you know, like to maybe criticize that. They couldn't get over the hump, whatever you want to say. It just kind of happened. And last year's group came in, and then some other people stepped up in their roles. Mm -hmm. That year before, Cam Lack wasn't necessarily playing as much. It was a 10 game season, and she had transferred in. Mm -hmm. So she didn't really get a chance to find herself on the team that year. And, and Piper was kind of down the pecking order. She played a lot, had some starts and whatnot. Um, so that group rose up, and those seniors did a great job, I think, of, of kind of like, hey, we can reshape this team into whatever we want. You could have went down the, in a bad direction, but they kept things in a, in a good direction, and they had a really good season last year. And you had some younger players really take form like Sarah Baradelli, yeah. you know, and she was a sophomore last year and, and Megan Driver really emerged on the scene as a good player. And there was also talented players like Bryn, mm -hmm. who really, you know, she kind of started off the season, but I think she was trying to find her role. Um, and she really excelled and I think the second half of the season was a big part of what we did last year as a team. Um, obviously, Alina McDaniel is a senior. She embraced like being the sixth. Yeah, she talked about that a lot on here. We, I had her on twice. She was a starter for two years. Right. So as a freshman starts, um, she missed that COVID year, elected not to be here. Um, comes back, she's the sixth person. And I think that role suited her well too because she had certain experience. She could come in with a lot of the, the bench players and become a leader on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just a tremendous athlete as well, very athletic. Um, could attack the rim. Um, and then you also had a player I look at like Addie Cherry, mm -hmm. who didn't necessarily play as much last year as, as she might have. She had some big points though, down the stretch. She wanted to, um, she had some injuries, but you can see that there's um, a spark there with her. Mm -hmm. of like, she was gonna be a really good player. Um, and just very talented, hardworking individual. So I think she was fueled in the off season of like, we lost Cam Lack, we lost Piper, players like that, it's gonna be my time to shine. And that's yeah. been interesting to see so far. But I think the biggest thing is just finding your role on your team and being coachable, you know? Your coach is gonna put you in the role they think that's gonna be most successful for you right now. That's not your role for all four years, um, but your role can change as time goes on. So I think it's important to embrace and, and communicate with your coach on what your role is, how you can help this team be as successful as possible. Well, wow. I think the teams that have success on our campus and the most success championship level teams, the, the student athletes are very good about embracing their role and how can I help this team reach our ultimate goals. Well, interesting stuff. And I love that little breakdown of the team, bring back some of my memories just from all those name drops. And Aaron, I gotta ask you a question because we're kind of going in this direction. What is the biggest lesson that you've learned being involved in sports for so long? Biggest lesson? Because we talk about sports as the great communicator, the great lesson teacher. It's a great teacher for sure. Um, I think it's just, I don't necessarily go through this as much, uh, but just being able to battle through the adversity of, of what's presented to you as an athlete. Mm. You know, you're talking about advice for the athletes. Um, just battling through adversity, whether it's hey, our team didn't reach our goals this year, or I was banged up, didn't have the season I wanted. Um, I just think adversity teaches you a lot about yourself. For sure, your team. most definitely. Um, and sports can kind of have a way of humbling you pretty quick. For sure. And yeah, I was just, like I was saying, this is a podcast that this guy, Nick Goggins, um, he was talking about, like, we don't learn stuff when things are going well. Anyone can be happy, it's easy to be happy, but 
how do we learn with adversity? How do we deal with being sad? Like, just how do we deal with the dark times? Because that's what we learn a lot. And I think so many people, like, uh, I know you're on Instagram, like, you see these, like, these influencers about discipline, these, like, athletic trainers, like, they're trying to talk about routine, but, like, I think so many of us, we haven't gone through those challenges. We saw our minds are so cluttered with things. And once we start to see what we can do in adversity, we can start to like, get more focused on our goals, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think another big thing, what you're talking about here, your advice and whatnot is, um, it's just learning to kind of bounce back from that adversity. Mm. Um, and also embracing, you know, what's going on. Um, and kind of living in the moment and then things like that are very important. They're cliche, cliche they're sports talk. Kind no, of that's thing. fair. I'll be getting a lot of that here, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, I think it's important just to kind of embrace the day you're at um, and work hard, do the best you can on that day in terms of individual, in terms of team. Um, and then, you know, things could go sideways like any day. All of a sudden you plan on doing this and then all of a sudden you're out for the season. Um, you plan on being a big part of the team and then you're not able to do that. What is your role on the team now? Again, you're, you're, it's shifting again. Um, you can still be an effective part of the team, especially if you're a leader on that team. So I think it's just embracing, you know, the day to day and kind of living in the moment. Wow. Living in the present tense. And that's kind of, <laughs> not, I don't know when we'll get to the quotes, but I, Kind of one of those quotes pulls off of that. So. Uh, awesome. Now, I'm very excited for our final quote of the day segment to hear what you got for us. But, Aaron, you know, you've talked about some memories. You've talked a lot about specific games. And I know you're probably going to hate you for this question, but do you have a favorite memory at WNJ? Favorite memory? <laughs> I knew you were going to sigh. Once you start singling memories out, then that's where we get into trouble, I think. Okay, but, I didn't ask you. For those, I was not going to ask Aaron what his favorite team is. We get a lot of that uh, questions to me individually. Okay. Especially the the student athletes that are comfortable, you know, asking those questions. And I have a funny story with women's basketball. I might just dive right in now. Um, it was toward the end of the season last year. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've heard this or not, probably not. But um, I think it might have been championship week um, last year. Women's basketball was down there. Um, Brent and Cam, they're working. You know, the guards had their own little workouts. And they, they stopped me. I was just walking by. Hey Aaron, we have a question for you. And this is where it gets, it's a loaded question. <laughs> it was, and you know their personality, so you can, you can kind of see where this is going. They're like, we know Kyron's your favorite men's player. Who's your favorite on the women's team to watch? So I'm like, oh boy, should I answer this or not? So is Kyron your favorite men's team? They never got that answer because they just assumed. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I think the men's team as a whole is just fun to watch how they play. Oh, it's so fun. It's you play that points press, game. you're up and down. Yeah. Uh, certain players step up different every game. You see the different skills of everyone. For sure. JR can shoot. He's streaky. Like sometimes he gets on a run one game. It's it's fun to watch. Uh, Bigley attacks the hoop. Kyron does a number of different things. But they just assume that Kyron. Uh -huh. And they know that I, I run the WNJ Athletics uh, social media. They're like, we know Kyron's your favorite because he gets posted the most. Which, <laughs> we're posting the people that get Athlete of the Week. Yeah. Uh, who has the best game, per se. That doesn't necessarily mean someone's our favorite. Okay. We'll, put those on, there. we'll put that on the on record right now. Okay, receipt. It's a receipt. And that's the same with, like, oh, basketball gets posted the most. Well, they have 30 games, and 15 are at home. They won... How many games between the two teams did they win last year? A no. lot. <laughs> so if we win, we get an interview. Um, so they're like, we know Kyron's your favorite. Who's the favorite to watch on the women's team? And I played the game with them a little bit. Uh, and I think they were both hoping that I'd say them. And I was like, you know what? You know who I really like watching play? is Megan Driver. <laughs> and they were like, get out of here. <laughs> like, they were so upset that I didn't say no. Um, and I was being truthful. They wanted the truth. I just thought coming as a freshman. Megs is a she double brought, double machine. She brought a dynamic to the team that we hadn't really had. And Ali Cito was a good double double player. Mm -hmm. And she was a different kind of player than Meg. But we lost Ali Cito. We needed someone to kind of fill that role. And Meg is just, she can be aggressive out there. Oh, yeah. And I think there were several times, and it probably was the first time I saw it, she goes up for a rebound and grabs it with one hand and like puts it down. She's like beast. you're running with the ball on a football. 
And I was just like, wow, I, I don't think I've seen anyone. And I've been covering games for almost a decade, you know, at this level. It's like, I don't see, know if I've seen someone rebound the ball like that before. Um, and I think Cam and Brand are fun players to watch, but if you ask me to pick one player last year that, you know, I got excited to watch play and do what they do, it was Megan in terms of like what she provided as a freshman. And I thought, I'm going on record, I think she was the best freshman in the conference. You know, some of the stats don't necessarily reflect that. And some of the other teams, uh, they get more opportunities. You know, our team was uh, 17 and one in conference. A lot of the fourth quarters, our starters weren't playing. Right. So Megan's numbers weren't gonna be as good necessarily as some of the other players. And the same thing kind of happened with all conference where a bunch of our kids, you know, you win the conference to dominate like that, you should be have some first team people. Facts. That's just my opinion. Facts. Okay. I would say that if we didn't win, it was another team. Um, but I told him Megan, and oh, that's funny. Get that's out a of funny here. Story. We're done with that. They never got my answer on the men's team because they just kind of assumed <laughs> oh, Kyron gets posted the most or whatever. But those are one of those teams that I have that relationship with. Uh, that's Megan. funny. That's awesome. Kind of joke with and whatnot. So that's fun. Now, Aaron, what's the co side committee? that you sit on? So COSIDA is the College Sports Information Directors of America. They have now changed their name to the College Sports Communicators. So now it's CSC. Okay. Um, so that's, a lot they give the academic awards, right? They give yeah. the academic awards. So okay. there will be academic uh, awards, all district, and then eventually all American. And we've had a good amount of success over time with that. And that's something I took pride in because Obviously, it's what the students accomplish. Mm -hmm. And there's an academic component, but there's also a component of if you're successful on the field and we're successful, you know, both of those components kind of mesh and they, you know, take that into your candidacy. So it's our job to determine who would be quality candidates for those uh, nominations um, every year for a number of sports. Um, and we nominated them for all district. And, and the way they used to do it was if you got all district, you went on to the All American ballot. This year, they kind of just, everyone you nominate um, is automatically all district. So okay. that's kind of different. But um, we've had a great amount of success in terms of academic All Americans since I've been here. And I don't want to go through and name them all because I'll probably miss some. Um, but Alex Keith is a guy. Oh, yeah. Football. Dude, He's like, when he, when, he came, now. when he came on here, I was like, what are you looking at? He was talking about how he, he actually has a medical paper per, published in a medical journal about something with the spine. Me and Drew were just sitting there, like, like that was above your head. Yeah, it was like, that. And I was like, so Drew, what are you doing? He's like, uh, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, Drew's a smart guy himself. We have different yeah. talents. Yeah, yeah Drew's a smart guy himself. He's like, yeah, it worked helping people who are paralyzed in their spine with this device. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. crazy, right? Because okay. he's nice it's at football, like, too. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah, because he's crazy at football, too. Like, I'd be scared if I was a quarterback. Yeah, he's so good. Alex, Sean Doran was the guy last year that mm -hmm. also got Academic All-American. I'm trying to remember a couple of your teammates. I think Tyler Horvat and Evan Yep. Both of them were on there. Um, we've had some other people. I, I know I'm missing someone from last year, but... If you get a handful or more a year, like for being, you know, W and J, it's really competitive. You have kids from Johns Hopkins on there, yeah. and, you know, Case Western, and um, you know, school CMU in terms of where our district CMU's in, and then all the Pennsylvania schools were in our district before. Mm -hmm. So you, Eastern PA, you have some good schools, and it gets competitive. So I took pride in like, here's who we're going to nominate. Here's who I think makes sense. There's a requirement GPA, and now it's 3.5 at least. Um, and then I reach out to those individuals say, hey, can you send me your resume? Because we're allowed to get so many bullet points. So like any little thing there that can kind of help us get an advantage awesome. on the nomination, I'll use to our advantage. Um, but I take pride in that because our student athletes do do a good job and they deserve to be recognized, you know, regionally and nationally. Um, and that's something that I play a role in. I don't necessarily play a role in a all-American vote or anything like that, but this is a little something different. And I think the opportunities provided at WJ in terms of academics and athletics kind of aligns with that award. We've had a great amount of success. And I think reputation wise, we are someone that the uh, voters for that 
kind of look at more closely and we've had success. And I've been on that committee. Um, so right now, um, women's basketball and softball, I'll be in charge of like putting that ballot together oh, yeah. and the, you know what the votes were and then we push that out. And that's kind of like, just kind of giving back to the SID organization. Uh, there's no money out of that, but um, actually Nate Mauritia, who was at SID at Westminster, he's now at Mount Union, he moved over. He kind of recommended me for a spot. He was on that committee as well, and I think he still is at Mount Union now. Um, one of my best friends in the profession, um, just a great guy. Um, but he got me involved with that committee last year. I got you. Um, but it's good to be involved with committees like that. Okay. You know, just to stay in tune with, you know, giving W and J a voice as well on something like mm -hmm. that. Awesome. And Aaron, I want to get to a few fun questions now. Um, now the pressure's off. Oh yeah, that was great. That was awesome. But I do like to hit some fun stuff too. To get uh, some moments that where uh, we can learn some stuff about the people that we might not know. Some interesting questions for our fun segment. I call it here. Now I have one for you tonight, and I'll answer first. Cause I was saying never ask anything that I wouldn't answer myself. Okay. So, what is the best sports music to be played at a stadium? And I said Renegade by Styx because there's nothing like that. There's nothing like hearing Renegade. But I know obviously we can't really play that at W and J because that's like the Steelers thing. You know what uh, I mean? We can play whatever. I mean, we can play it, but like, it's the Steelers thing. Like, so like, at WJ, like, what would you say is the best song that you've like, if there's like two minutes left in a basketball game, like, need to get the crowd fired up. And I know you're not always in charge of music, but like, what song if would you If I was. Play? If, I'm if you were, because that is under your department, right? I those. would say, uh, I like a lot of this. Rocks like classic rock. I think that gets people into the game. Back still. in black, like what you're talking about. Okay. I used to try and cue up black and uh, back in black. Uh -huh. I think men's soccer a few times. So uh -huh. I was wearing black. It was PAC tournament. Oh, that's dope. right before the game. Like we do the starting lineup. You do the national anthem. The game's ready. Like we're almost ready for game time. Get that going. I think that's a good one. Um, I'm trying to just think. Enter Sandman's obviously a good one. Yeah, Hell's, all Hell's those, Bells. All those classic ones. Yeah. I would go with. Thunderstruck. That genre. Seven Nation Army. Probably right. played those songs more times than I <laughs> care to count at this point. <laughs> um, in terms of the newer stuff, lately, maybe we've been overdoing it, but Pump It Up was like. I was going to say that. I was just like, gosh, Pump It Up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Pump It Up was like a big one last he year. He said maybe we'd overdo it. <laughs> Yeah, so we carried it over into like all the sports this year, but women's lacrosse, that was one that they were all about last year. So you gotta give them kudos. Mm -hmm. And they were winning a lot and they won the championship. They really got into that, like like I said, after the starting lineups, there's like a minute or so. Yeah. They go back to the bench and we blast that on there and it really got them going for the games. Yeah, that's awesome. So we've kind of been rolling with that for basketball now in the starting lineups and eventually we'll have to find something else maybe to to shift back over to the Bulls theme song was a great oh, one back classic. in the day. You can play uh, Paint It Black by uh, the Rolling Stones. Okay. That'd be a good one. Yeah, so there's probably like a handful or you okay. know, 10 at your disposal, I think, that we have on like a playlist that I think are good ones. Um, now, I, I ended up like the breaks, I was playing like King Vaughn and 42 Doug and like all the new rap and stuff. Yeah, that might be more of your territory than I. <laughs> I, I know enough to be dangerous. Maybe I'm getting too old out here. But I know like what's on the playlist. And it okay, tends to be like some of the playlists end up being kind of repetitive. So I'll pick up on some of those songs. Um, but most of the music I listen to ends up being like these playlists at this point. Yeah. Um, I go home, and at that point, I'm like, kind of like, I'm ready to have some peace and quiet. <laughs> so a lot of the music I hear that's newer ends up being from our playlist and whatnot. I got you. Now, that leads me to my next question that we've added to the present tense, just on this season five. If you had to listen to one musical artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? I don't know if I could just pinpoint. I mean, that's the question. That's the question, Aaron. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say you made this question, so I guess, but I don't know. I said I, Mac I Miller, if you want my answer. I tend to like some country, honestly. Like okay. Some good country music. Um, some kind of people that fly under the radar almost a little bit, I think, in terms of like popularity. I think Luke Combs is a good one. I That's a great answer. He's down from your neck of the woods, I think. Yes, he is. Um, Where is he? Is he from North Carolina? I think he's down there from North Carolina, I believe. Um, 
So he's a really good popular country guy uh, that I think makes some good songs. There's yeah, some, he went to Appalachian State. There's yeah. some variety. I think when Appalachian State hosts the game day, that's right. It was crazy they beat Texas A&M and ended up fumbling the bag. They didn't make a bowl game. Oh yeah. Yeah, he went to AC Reynolds. I've, uh, I've been to high school. That's before. tough, but like, just some of the stuff they write. I like artists that kind of have some variety. Okay. You know, country gets to be a lot of cliche kind of lyrics. Oh uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and you're from Carolina, so I'm sure you get some country down that way. <laughs> yes. But uh, I just like some variety in what you write. Yeah. Um, sure. I don't want to hear like the same kind of songs from a singer or the same topics. Facts. I think it's good to have a variety of, you know, countries like, oh, there's some love songs or there's some adversity um, that you might've been faced with or, or whatever. You know, you have your drinking songs or whatever <laughs> too. But um, he's one that kind of comes to mind lately. Yeah. I don't know if that would have been like an all time pick. I might That's definitely to, solid. I might answer. have to get back to you and think whoever's about it. Answer. But we'll open up season six with Aaron's corrected answer. <laughs> yeah. So whoever's on, I'll pass him a note. Okay. Like, hey. Well, it's our first episode. I'll just say it now because I, I know it'll be a surprise to people on the Instagram. But Horror's coming on first episode in the second first week. Second episode is actually Addy and T. So okay. <laughs> all three of those I know personally. Yeah, you do know. Personally. I'm gonna have to tune in all those. Okay. So, awesome. Um, Addy is a student worker. For That's me, right. Actually. So I'll, we'll, we'll, there'll be some shout outs. There'll be some shout outs. And uh, Addie's great because she came in last year as a freshman. And I kind of reached out to women's basketball like Gina in the summer, Coach Drew, and I'm like, hey, we're looking for some student workers. Like we're trying to build up numbers with this. Like there's a lot of games. And Addie was one that kind of reached out. And sometimes you get people reach out and they don't necessarily like follow through or they get here and get overwhelmed, mm -hmm. especially an athlete, you know, your first semester. Facts, yeah. But Addie was like, hey, I wanna work in the office. Like, and that's kind of different than a game. So like, I kind of got to know Addie a little bit from the start. And I think I told her this, like, I was trying anything. Cause I don't want to sit there in silence in the office. You know, I want them to be comfortable and like, they can have fun. So I'd ask Addie questions like nonstop. I'm like constantly thinking like, what can I ask her next? <laughs> just to keep conversation going while she does work and I'm doing work and whatnot. And she's just great. Uh, we got to the spring semester and Addie's personality just like blew up. I think when you're hanging around Brandon, and Megan and Cam Black, <laughs> that probably tends to happen. But like, yeah. <laughs> like Addie was in, the, in, the, in the fall, like her personality is one way and then now, like, it's completely blown up. And I think that's part of that process. I gotta, ha I gotta tell you about the conversation we had the other night where uh, I was talking about her coming on. It's funny. I, it's it's probably, I don't want to, like, say it on air, but oh, yeah. it's funny. But it's a four-year, it's a, like a four-year process with all the student athletes and, and whatnot. You can see them come in. Well, you have your interactions with them as a freshman. And then by the time you're a senior, like, just to see how things have kind of developed and also how they've grown in their sport and also academically, what they're gonna go on to after graduation. That's a really fun thing for me to see. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And Aaron, my next question for you is, what is your favorite movie of all time and why? And I feel like it's gotta be a sports movie, right? <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. I, I feel like this is the, the problematic segment for me because like, I'm good at talking about the other stuff, but like, I don't see myself necessarily as like a favorites kind of guy. Really? See, this is usually the part where people just relax, like they're so like chill. Uh, probably the student athletes, they don't want to talk about themselves and all that. Um, this helps them like, talk about something For sure. else. Come on, you gotta like uh, this. There's, you gotta have sports, sports movies. movies. I mean, I think you gotta, gotta break it down by sport, right? Oh, no, no, is that the easy way out, care. Aaron? That's the easy way out. But if you want, I mean, but like, all right, I uh, think football. I think Major League is a baseball movie. Is it the best baseball movie? No, I'm saying okay. it's my best okay. baseball movie. I think okay. there's several others. Oh, yeah. You know, people like Sandlot, Field of Dreams. Field, I mean, it's got to be Field of Dreams. Right? Um, Bull Durham, whatever. Um, I'll watch those. Major League's a fun one. Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn. Yeah. It's like the misfits. It's, yeah. They mesh them all together. Major League is a good one. That, that owner's trying to move them out. Yeah. Um, you know, Cleveland had it won. They still won a World Series. Yeah. It's just kind of like a fun movie to me. And I probably watched it like a hundred times. Really? <laughs> like growing up. And so what about football? Because I know you played football in middle school. Uh, I played football through high school. Oh, you played football? Yeah. So oh, my interview, I, I put a lot of this information. You did an interview during the uh, COVID on WNJR.com. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was with Tiana Swirsky, who yes. was another work study of mine, a uh, field hockey player. Um, yeah, so. Football, I mean. Football. I'm I think most people like to go to remember the Titans. Titans. That's probably down your way to Rudy. 
Invincible uh, for the love of the game. I'm sorry, that's baseball. Um, any game? I haven't seen any game or something. What's the longest yard? Longest yard. Uh, there's just so many of us. Yeah. That's why to me, like, it's hard to pick. Um, yeah, it's a hard question. Friday Night Lights. Have you seen that one? That was I kind know, of a was... big one. Everyone knows this TV show, but there was a movie as well. Yeah. And the movie kind of came out when. You know, I'm dating myself out here a little bit, but it was kind of like when I was in high school playing. <laughs> so, okay. like, that was a big one to me of, like, you know, Texas football. What position did you play? Thing, a linebacker. What position did you play in baseball? Catcher. Okay, cool. So, you know, you know, back there getting knocked around a lot, basically both those positions. Yeah, really. Uh, but I thought those were fun positions. I actually never played catcher. And I played baseball uh, from when I was four years old, five years old. Never played catcher. I go to ninth grade, you know, um, JV high school kind of deal. And the the guy that kind of did the catchers, you know, he was the catching coach or whatever. He was like my junior high middle school football coach. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, this kid, uh, you're tough. I think you can handle like catching. And I played like shortstop third, primarily like growing up. And I started growing into like, uh, I would say like a bigger, stronger body especially playing football and lifting so like we're gonna move you behind catcher they had a, a guy that was like a stud uh -huh. so like i wasn't gonna have to play right away or anything like that at the varsity level but i really just loved catching really um i don't know how you're in on it. every play i know but you, you get know, you that know, relationship stuff. with the pitcher yeah uh, all sometimes the bullpens they keep and stuff. on the ball yeah. i might get sick with the pitchers but <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're in on every play. You're constantly thinking. You can see the plays develop. You're like kind of a captain out there, even if you're not. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can kind of help, you know, everyone in front of you direct traffic and whatnot. And I think that's why a lot of good catchers or even just serviceable catchers go on to be managers at like the major Facts. league level. Yeah, David Ross for the Cubs. They have had a lot of great seasons, but I think he's one of the more popular managers among his players. So. Yeah, I think just catchers kind of. Are really cued in to like the game for sure and having that knowledge and i think it's because you're constantly thinking mm. now Aaron, my next question for you has become a staple of the present tense. it's been around for a while now and i can give you examples from different coaches if you need time to think okay but if you had a free saturday with no plans no commitments and money was not an issue what would you do i'm not even worried about the money part i think it's just trying to find and this happens a lot in the summer, you know, because mm. during the year we're constantly going. The coaches kind of recruit in the summer at times, right. like certain sports. Why well, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, so I kind of get this free summers. Uh, we're in the office Monday through Fridays. You take some days, whatever. What do you guys do during the summer Monday through Friday? Getting ready for the next year, wrapping up the past year. A lot of that website behind the scenes kind of stuff. I gotcha. Preparation, archiving stuff. Um, but if I had a free Saturday, um, I guess this Saturday is free. Now that we're talking yeah. about Yeah, well, it. there you go. What, what are you going to do this Saturday? <laughs> I think a lot of times it's just finding something you enjoy doing. But I'm, what are you? I'm, I'm, a, big, you? I'm a big, uh, especially the, during the summer, I'll come home from work. Maybe I'll work out here, grab a bite to eat, you know, have my dinner, whatever. And there's enough time to do this where I'll just go for a walk. You know, we'll, we talked about podcasts, music, whatever. Yeah. Put something in. Yeah, that's a just walk for like an hour. I could walk. Do you like hiking or is just walking? Uh, it gets to be like some hills. It's not going out to trails or anything. Okay, so you're not a big I'll trail I'll walk man. around like communities. That's I'll fun. sometimes walk around campus like in the summer. Oh, that's fun. And I could probably. I really respect that. I could probably walk all day, honestly. Like oh. I just really enjoy walking. Um, it's good for the mind. A lot. Uh, Henry David Thoreau and Walt Walter, Walter, Walter Emerson they used to walk around the uh, Walton. And I Pause. think it's just something right. you can always do. Yeah. I've had phases where I go in and out of like enjoy lifting or okay. like lifting steadily and stuff like that. Um, and I enjoy, you know, that kind of stuff as well. But just walking something every day, I feel like you can do and it kind of just like refreshes your mind. For sure. No, and I... you can kind of get your mind off whatever happened that day, um, whether it was positive or negative, and, and just really like kind of just relax. Wow, and Aaron, that, that, that's, really, that's a really great point. And one last question before we get a break here is, and this is, a, this, is a, this is a new one today. I'm pulling out your guinea pig for this question as well. If you could hang out with one athlete, dead or alive, throughout history for a day, who would it be? And I'd have to say either Michael Jordan or Steph Curry. Those are your answers? Yeah, I'd say probably Michael Jordan. 
So what were your answers to the, the favorite movie? Favorite I movie? I, that. I said Field of Dreams. I said Field of Dreams, but like if it's a non-sports movie, I'd probably say Fight Club. Okay. Um, and then Mac Music, uh, so, Mac Miller. Hang out with any athlete. Yeah. I don't know, like, I I grew up my favorite athlete, Ken Griffey Jr. Mm, that would be a fun one. Um, a little BP he with was Griffey really Jr. big time, like, when I was growing up. You probably got more of the tail end. Yeah. Seattle Mariners, Ken Griffey Jr. Um, just really cool. With the backwards hat and the home run derby, that's iconic. Yeah, hitting it off of the warehouse in Baltimore. Have you uh -huh. seen that? Oh, yeah. Just, like, really cool. And that's when I first got into baseball, like, playing. Um, so that really made an impact on me of, like, this. they made baseball cool. And I think that's kind of something that maybe they've lost. Like Baseball does a terrible job. Baseball's popularity. Yeah. Uh, like, you need someone like that to make baseball that's... cool for younger generations. Because there's just more sports now than ever. Like, lacrosse was a sport when I was younger, but now it's, like, a big deal. Soccer is, you know, the most popular sport in, the world, in terms yeah. of you know, interest in, in people playing. So Ken Griffey Jr. for sure. And if you're a baseball guy and you haven't seen a lot of Ken Griffey Jr. stuff, I would definitely recommend because I feel like the hype around Ken Griffey Jr., you know, he never won a title. Um, in baseball, that's hard to put on one player. You know? Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, but just like the level of impact he had and and he wore his hat backwards and he was cool and the stardom that he brought up. I would say it's borderline like Michael Jordan level. In oh, I would agree. That's, that's not a hot take. I mean, that's a solid In take. terms of his talents, yeah. you know, he was like that to the game of baseball. So I would definitely say Ken Griffey Jr. Um, in terms of like an athlete that was my favorite. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Aaron, it's time for our last trivia segment of the year. Now, you talked about you've been in the pack for a long time. And this is perfect because I have a question for you tonight. It really applies to the pack. So how our trivia works here, the president, I know you listen before, I'll go to the rules for the people at home. We ask the question for the break. We have time to discuss it. Well, obviously he's by himself tonight, so there's no discussing, but he has time to think about it while we listen to some uh, December by Collective Soul. And then we will come back and hear our answer to the last trivia segment of the season. We'll do our quote of the day. Aaron, are you ready for your trivia question? I guess I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> what school in the pack who is a full member of the pack is farthest in mileage from the campus of WJ. Sir, we'll get your answer right after the break. Girls, to the season finale of the presidential with Sam Stewart on 91.7 WNJR Washington and a line at WNJR.org. It surprised me who it was. Uh, you're saying full member. Full member. And so I guess that would be no case, no Carnegie. In which case would be the answer? Case would be the answer, yes, yeah. that's correct. I mean, I think I knew the answer, unless this is a trick question out here. Hey, what do you, who do you think it is? Allegheny now. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to find out. That's crazy you've been in the pack for this long. Something like that. I mean, I've enjoyed everywhere that I've been. That's like, awesome. Would you say WJ is your favorite? This is another question. I, guess. I mean, the camera's still running, so you gotta be careful. <laughs> uh, Maddie Devine, you know who that is? Yeah. She asked me that like a couple years ago because she was like a work study. and She was more involved mm. before. Um, yeah, you know, she's very involved with her sorority. So, um, but she asked me that like I think it was the COVID spring. Uh, it's like, oh, WJ is your favorite school, right? It's like, yeah. Because <laughs> you had it now. <laughs> I also like it too, though, because I've been, had been able to put more of a footprint on it because I've been in charge, you know what I mean? For sure. And I think the teams I worked with and everything, like, I think it just makes it the best, but that's just, a, that's just me. For sure. Yeah, definitely when you have, like, the initiative to, like, well, you have, like, the power to do, like, initiatives and things that you want to do. I can definitely see, like, it, it'd be more enjoyable than having to work for someone else. Even if you like working for someone else, it's just, you seem like a person who, like, enjoys, like, creativity and stuff. Yeah. And you ultimately, you're still not, like, the person in charge. Right. It's just, like, nice knowing, like, the coaches have that trust in you 
of being the person that's promoting them and you're the main person and they have trust like come to you and bounce ideas off or, or just share information with you that'll make your job mm -hmm. easier and, and whatnot. So, um, and I just, you know, W and J just felt like a home to me. That's and, awesome. And stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's really crazy. How, cliche. So no, 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 it's all right. So, so many coaches are tenured here too. Like, so like, you know, Coach Mountain's been here for 20 years, Coach Sirianni, Coach Gina's been here for a long time. Coach Stewie's even, he's getting close to a decade, been here now. You know what I mean? It's just been a lot of coaches who are just here for a long time, you know? Yeah, and it's nice too because the coaches, and even Scott, like he was an SID. So well, Seiko. Scott, it'd be that. pretty easy for him to be like, do this this way, do that that way, do that. And I've been to like other schools where like the president like told my boss, like, you need to do more of this, you need to do more of that. Like, yeah. that doesn't happen here either. So like, they trust you like, hey, if you were hired to do a job, um, they trust you to do that job the way you think is best. So I think that's important. That's you. awesome. Yeah, that's, that, I find that's really important for Stop me. Stop do stuff to help you out. Yeah. Like, like hey, be leery of this or do this or, um, Scott's even like stabbed games for us during spring break because lacrosse will, like lacrosse has scheduled games where you guys down in Florida. He's stabbed games for us. Like, oh, that's to dope. me, that's being like MVP level because no, Scott's you're, the, Scott's you're, the, you're the AD and you're like out here statting a women's lacrosse game was 45 and snowing sideways or whatever <laughs> <laughs> like and just the willingness to do that like speaks highly for scott and um just being a team player for sure yeah that's awesome yeah scott's awesome it was a great episode to open up the year and i'm excited about that kind of bookend i didn't realize he was the first episode yeah and then i was the last episode yeah so that worked out we well. had a lot of good student athletes in between it was it was a fun one i can't even lie it was it was probably my favorite well, i listened season. to his or watched his like pretty much start to finish Obviously, just because my connection and working with him. Yeah, he's he, he, he's a really cool guy. He's really, I think he really cares about everyone a lot, which I'm sure is important, important but just playing under him is important. It's tough being like AD too, because yeah. you take a lot of like questions and why don't you do things this way and this coach. Well, everyone's got like the way they want. This isn't treating me well, and especially during COVID. Like, so decisions weren't necessarily his or yeah. he's Scott, just kind of the message, so. All right, I'm excited for this quote of the day segment because I I got a little wrap up thing where I give my top three from this season. So uh, sure like I don't it. know if I'll make that, but that one. These hey. are some good ones. Yeah. We'll say before tonight. Top three before tonight. And we are back on the present tense with Sam Shore, 91.7 FM and WNJR Watch and online at WNJR.org. We are live on season five. Finale of the present test talking with WJ SID Aaron Thompson. And before the break, we're in our last trivia segment of the year. We asked Aaron, what is the farthest school from a full member in the pack? The farthest distance in mileage from WJ. And Aaron, your answer is. I still feel like this is a trick question, but I'm going to say Allegheny College. That's correct. You're a winner on our last trivia first, segment. First year in the uh, conference. Yeah, it was a little bit of a trick question just because I wouldn't. So if you're, I, I thought it was more in Pittsburgh, but it is really up north. It's pretty far. Well, you think Allegheny County. Yeah. Like Allegheny College. Allegheny High School is. But um, Allegheny College, I knew would be the answer because I've been there. And also, like, it used to be Teal would be that answer. Yeah, I thought and it was Teal. you go past Teal to get to Allegheny. It's only a few more it's miles. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's close. But, all right, Aaron, it's our last segment of Season 5. Of course, my favorite segment of the show, time for the quote of the day. I've got... A little wrap-up segment, of course, where the fans of the show, they know we give our top, my top three favorite quotes from the season. Aaron's got a piece of paper here with some quotes on it. So it's going to be a really fun quote of the day. We're both big quote guys, I know. So everyone get down those pen and pencils. We're about to have some good quotes for you right now. But Aaron, I'll turn it over to you for the last quote of the day segment of the year. So I amazingly, like, didn't have a sports quote here. That's okay. Um, I feel like I'm a big sports quote guy. Like, if you look at, like, coaches Vince Lombardi and, mm. and John Wooden I think those are some great uh, quotes in terms of motivations if you're looking for something uh, moving forward um, as an athlete I would really like to dig into some of those sports quotes but here are the quotes I have and the first quote is it is amazing what you can accomplish if we don't care who gets the credit mm. uh, basically going on the lines of 
this is a team, you have to rely on everyone to be successful. Um, and it's also not like, it's not a me thing, you know what I mean? So if your team is successful, it was a team effort. Um, no one person um, should get more credit than the others. And that was actually Harry S. Truman, oh, the 33rd president of the United States. So once again, it is amazing what we can accomplish if we don't care who gets the credit. Wow, I think that's a, that's, that's a good one to six with me. Um, and I actually have a second one. I think this is probably illegal and against the rules. No, go for it. No, I encourage it. The second one's pretty simple and straightforward. And we kind of talked about this in part of the interview is, and I don't even know who said it, but it's just something that stuck with me and a message to kind of give to people is be where your feet are. Oh, that's because a good one. a lot of people, a lot of times. I heard Clay Thompson say that one time. I'm, I, I, I know it's kind of because I heard him say that one time. I'm sure people have said it and someone else has said it. And so I don't know exactly where it came from, who was the originator. But be where your feet are, I think, means like embrace that moment you're in. Because a lot of times I feel like people are always anticipating the next moment. I'm sure you're anticipating the baseball season, like right. the whole team. But you also have a process to get to that. Mm. And you shouldn't wish time away. Um, you shouldn't, you know, wake up and say, hey, I can't wait until that next game. Right. Um, for me, you know, we don't have a home game again until like December 30th. But I don't want to wish away time and say, I can't wait to get to December 30th or I can't wait to get to right. this season or that season or can't wait to get to summer. You need to embrace every day um, and kind of see where that takes you. Wow. There, if you're not open, if your mind's not open, to what that day is going to present to you, uh, then you're kind of cheating yourself, I think. That's very well said. That's I, I love that sort of stuff. Be where you are, live the present tense. Stay, you know, stay where your feet are. I, I like that a lot. And Aaron, I, I did bring two for us tonight uh, of my own accord, so I'll read them out now. They, they're a little, they're a little bit philosophical, but I, I am a philosopher. And my mom sent me one before. Another one I, I read a book about stoicism. So I'll give you the one my mom sent me first. Um, it's by Robin Sharma's. The fears we don't face become our limits. For sure, I think that's, you know, you gotta tackle, you yeah. know, what I said, head on. Exactly. The challenges, any adversity you face, um, yeah. you have to be willing to work through that to be successful as a student athlete and in life. Yeah, the obst I mean, the obstacle is the way. You obstacle. can't get past stuff like that. Right. There's no like detour. Uh -huh. You know, you have to go through it head on and yeah, you know, face challenge. For sure. And the second one is this this one this this one is real deep. It's by the Stoic Heraclitus. Under the comb, the tangle and the straight path are the same. Let that sink in for a sec. That might have been kind of over my over my head. Read it again. Under the comb, the tangle and the straight path are the same. Okay, what does that quote mean to you? To me. That quote means when we examine our life, when we comb through our life, the tangles, the bad moments, the scary moments, the dark moments, and the straight path where everything makes sense, it's all part of the same thing. It's all part of life. When we examine life, it's all one thing. You're not just kind of one or the other. It's all part of a life when we yeah, examine it. Yeah, I think that's kind of like those experiences are like they made you who you are. Mm -hmm. So sometimes things in life don't go the way you planned or the way you wanted. Mm -hmm. But that's going to help shape you moving forward. Exactly. Um, those tangles, those obstacles, we have to go through them. Yeah, for sure. If you don't go through any adversity or any any challenges in life, it's going to be pretty boring. It I might agree. be easy in the way, you know, it yeah. might go the way you want. Katie Hawk says there's there's no good books or movies that don't have uh, bad things happen to characters. That's how character development happens. Yeah, you have to have a good plot with that. So, Facts. Yes, so sir. I think any kind of challenges, that's going to help shape who you are and... Uh, send you on a different path even maybe than you didn't expect that ends up being a better path. Yeah, for sure. Now, y'all, I want to give my top three, and not necessarily the best, but I think the ones that spoke to me personally. So this first one comes from Tyler Sabo, who gave us this one from Robert Frost. In three words, I could sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. Very solid one there. My second one is from Sam Vesa, wide receiver on the football team, from Tupac Shakur. A seed must go grow regardless of the fact that it is planted in stone. And three, this one comes from McKinley Joseph. It's a quote from his own mind. Today is a good day for a great day. That's my top three quotes. And Aaron, thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's been so fun just talking with you, you know, reminiscing about some athletes who used to be here, 
current memories, you know, current athletes that we have here at the school. I just want to thank you for joining me. The fans have been asking for this for a long time. And thank you always for supporting. I remember you came to meet the uh, PAC championship. Um, and you just, you know, I remember that, that was the day I did the presidential made it when Aaron Thompson said I was doing a good job. <laughs> well, so I, I, think, can, I, I can make that for you. So I just think you do a great job. Thank you. It's a, it's a good avenue for our student athletes to get exposure and, and also, um, you know, kind of tell their story um, and also get comfortable like behind the mic, being talking to someone, getting out of their shell a little bit. I think that's very important in college just is to be comfortable you know, with who you are um, and kind of just growing it as a whole. So um, I think this is a great show. Um, I can't wait to see what happens in the spring semester. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, y'all, that is it. I remember I walked out of the studio last season. Kiki was the, the final guest on the show. And I remember y'all can check the receipts. I said, it's a damn promise that we're not finished. And I'll make that promise again. We're going to keep it pushing. You got to keep living free. And of course, have a great night. Remember to live in the present tense. And we're clear.